Ah, trucks. As American as apple pie, baseball, and Florida man? Came out to a bag. Like, like a straight way and no way. Known for the reliability and usability, being a tool on and off the job site. But did you know there are some trucks out there that will blow the doors off a supercar? That's right, we're talking sleeper trucks. If you're new here, my name's Brad Danger. Smash the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. Otherwise, it's great to see you guys again. Let's go. First on the list comes from the geniuses over in Dearborn, Michigan. Yep. We're talking about Ford Motor Company. And when they decided that their truck buyers needed a track car and a truck all tied into one, they came up with what is now known as the Ford Lightning. Ford brought in the SVT or Special Vehicles team to transform a standard F-150 into a rowdy muscle truck. So. How'd they do it? They started by stuffing a 5.4 liter V8 under the hood. And when that didn't satisfy them, they slapped on an Eaton supercharger. So stock, they're putting out an impressive 380 horsepower and a just as impressive 450 foot pounds of torque. And that's good for this truck to carbecue zero to 60 in just over five seconds. But you don't leave these things stock. And after you throw in a small pulley, exhaust, and a tune, you're knocking on 500 horsepower's door. Back in the day, nearly 20 years ago, the SVT Lightning was the fastest pickup truck that you could buy, hitting a top speed of 147 miles per hour. And now you can get all that performance for cheap because you can pick up one of these for less than 10K, which sounds almost too good to be true. And remember how I said it was the fastest truck at the time? Well, this next truck, took its crown. Okay, before I unveil it, I'm gonna give you guys one guess. Let us know down in the comments. What is the fastest truck of all time? Well, production truck that is. Yeah, I knew you were gonna guess it. It's the Dodge Ram SRT10. Dodge is known for doing dodgy things, like stuffing their muscle car motors in just about everything in their lineup. And what happens when they throw a supercar motor into their truck? Well, it pretty much set the automotive world on fire. They somehow shoehorned an 8.4 liter V10, yes, the engine straight out of the Viper, into their standard Ram pickup. And even better than that, you could get one with a manual transmission, which if you're all about saving the manuals, like we are here at Ideal, Go snag one of these limited edition tees before we run out, because we're selling these about as fast as the SRT10 could do a burnout. Yes, this thing was a burnout monster, making 500 horsepower and 525 foot pounds of torque. And when the rear wheels could get traction, zero to 60 came in just 4.9 seconds. And remember the Lightning's 140 something mile per hour top speed? Yeah, this Dodge could do an impressive 154 miles per hour. And unlike the Ford Lightning, the SRT10 was offered with either a single cab or a double cab. So let me get this straight. It's supercar powered, you can row your own gears, and it's a truck? Whew, sign me up, but how much? Well, you can pick up a relatively clean example with less than 100,000 miles for less than $20,000. Yet, believe it or not, the SRT10 wasn't the first muscle truck that Dodge ever built. Back in the 70s, they created the adorably named Lil Red Express. Huh? Wasn't there an oil shortage in the late 70s? Yes, but Dodge found a brilliant loophole and they had to take advantage of it. The government had such tight emission restrictions that it pretty much killed off all the muscle cars. But those restrictions were only for vehicles that were 6,000 pounds or less. So what did Sneaky Dodge do? <laughs> Dodgy things. They built a truck at 6,050 pounds and stuffed in a big ol' honkin' 360 cubic inch V8 under the hood. And this gave that big truck a zero to 60 time in under seven seconds. When this thing came out in 1978, it was the fastest accelerating American car truck SUV to 100 miles per hour. It even out accelerated the Ferrari 308 and even the Porsche 928 and 911. And with less than 10,000 units ever made, it's rarer than most of those cars. So they're collectible today. And that's not even thanks to the Lil Red Express's party trick. It had stack exhaust exiting right behind the cab. And no, it's not a diesel truck rolling coal everywhere it goes. It's essentially a straight piped exhaust with some Hemi style mufflers. So it's fair to say that these things sound pretty gnarly. And in true 70s style, it's got wood trim not only in the interior, but also in the bed. As far as the name, the Lil Red Express comes from the paint. Bright ass red. And not to mention those sick gold accents. Yeah, this was 100% stock 
all factory coming from Dodge in the late 70s. So what does it cost to get one today? Well, first you gotta find one and then you gotta shell out at least 10 grand. But for something this rare and this iconic, it might just be worth it. But this next truck makes Dodge's Lil Red Express look like a Camry in terms of production numbers. Yeah, I mentioned the Lil Red Express had about 10,000 units. The Saline S331 Supercharged, 295. Yeah, you heard me right. The same people that make the bonker Saline S7 twin turbo supercar and also loads of hopped up Mustangs decided to build a truck. They just nabbed some go fast parts off their other builds and stuffed them into a Ford F-150. As far as the exterior styling, it has a body kit that looks like it was pulled straight off of an S7. And since Saline was the manufacturer of the S331, it means that each and every truck had to go through all the same federal tests that Ford and GM have to go through. And of course, it's not just a body kit or a bolt-on power kit. The standard 5.4 liter V8 that the S331's motor is based on produces 325 horsepower. But the one powering the S331 actually makes 450 horsepower, which is good for a zero to 60 sprint of sub six seconds. So it's fair to say that a lot has changed over the truck that it's based on. Not only did they fit it with wider tires and put on beefier sway bars to make it corner like a sports car, Saline even changed the routing of the exhaust. So now it's got side pipes. Yeehaw! While they are extremely hard to come by, they are truly a sight to behold. And every once in a while, they actually come up for sale. Like this one for just over 20,000 bucks. So the Saline S331 Supercharged was a truck built by a supercar manufacturer manufacturer. But what happens when a company comes out with a truck that's faster than most supercars? You get the GMC Cyclone. I'm going to take you guys all the way back to 1991 when GMC thought that they found a gap in the market. But for what? A super truck, because that's the theme of this video. This thing was based on the GMC Sonoma pickup truck, and it was stripped down and mated to a rocket. Well, actually a turbocharged six cylinder, but who's counting? And not only that, it powered all four wheels. Car magazines at the time couldn't get enough of this thing, and they even compared the Cyclone's acceleration to that of Ferrari's. And you know what? It won. Thanks to its 65% rear bias all-wheel drive and its beastly of an engine, it'll hit 60 miles per hour in 4.3 seconds. While this all seems like a ton of fun, why are they so rare? Well, GMC only made the Cyclone for two years. They didn't even produce 3,000 of them. So that makes them extremely hard to find on the used market. And when they do come up for sale, they fetch a pretty penny. But one lucky fella hit the jackpot and scooped this one up for just over 15 grand on Bring a Trailer. And it's got less than 100,000 miles and looks unmolested. Talk about an ideal deal. And if you wanna learn how to buy a car like a pro, check out the Ideal Car Strategies. It'll teach you exactly what you need to know on how to price cars on auction sites like Bring a Trailer or negotiate the ideal deal with a private party. And what's more American than apple pie, you ask? A Chevrolet El Camino. Okay, okay. It maybe isn't exactly a pickup truck, but it's definitely worth talking about. <laughs> El Camino is a true piece of Americana. So what happened in 1970 when they threw in a big old big block 454 V8 in it? They got a masterpiece. With that big block motor, this bald eagle ute will run circles around most muscle cars of its time. And that's all while hauling the goods up to the cabin on the weekends. The El Camino was kind of the muscle car with the practicality of a truck. It's also the closest thing that us Americans got to ever having a ute. Oh yeah, and that big block 454 was actually an LS6, an engine that they still produce to this day, 50 years later. So what kind of power did it make back in 1970? 200, 300, 400 horsepower? Nope. 450 horsepower, which was good for zero to 60 runs in about five seconds flat. And to step into one of these bad boys, you're going to need some cash. How much? nearly 40 grand, but you're gonna need to pay to play if you want a true piece of motoring Americana. But there are still options if you don't want an American truck. In my eyes, you really only got one option, the Toyota Tundra TRD Supercharged. But if you were to ask me, they should have called this thing 
the Fundra. Why? Because it's a regular cab short bed with a factory installed supercharger and a whole host of other warranty compliant TRD parts. And what Toyota did is they took the already stout 381 horsepower V8 and bumped it up to an impressive 504 horses, which pushes the truck to 60 in a mind blowing 4.4 seconds, making it one of the fastest trucks on this list. So while this isn't a specific model of Tundra, you can still get all these parts on any Tundra and make it a Fundra. So how much does it cost to get this type of performance? Well, the supercharger itself costs roughly $7,000. And you can imagine that all the other TRD parts cost another two to 3,000 bucks. So let's assume $10,000 on top of the cost of the truck. And considering you can pick up a short bed regular cab for just over 10K, which means you could have a certified missile for roughly 20 and still be able to haul a space shuttle. So you tell me what truck you would hate to see lining up next to you. For me, although I really like that SRT10 because it has that manual transmission, it would probably have to be the Ford Lightning because you don't know if it's stock or if it's modified to 600 plus horsepower. Either way, it would definitely blow my Porsche out of the water. And in the comments, let us know some of the trucks that we left off this list. Couldn't cover them all. And let us know if you've ever been lucky enough to own one of these ideal trucks. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, don't just hit the dislike button once, hit it twice. Really let us know. And if you're new here, my name is Brad Danger. This is Ideal Media. We keep you up to date on all the car buying and car content that you could ever need. So hit the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. And as always, keep living the ideal lifestyle.